So to say she went and grabbed your chin, titty turned around. She did, damn it! I ain't that crazy! Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to put your sample in the cup and pass it to the nurse as we head for the penultimate episode of Life After Lockup. In today's show, Montana Mills stumbles on the secret of life. So it's like once in a while we're gonna have this issue. Special needs Rob needs an adult. I'm this cord and they're both pulling. We have a hang on a second about Tenacious Tenny's totally fake job. Yeah, that's not gonna work for me. We play Spot the Typo on some petty larceny device. Project Hill. Tiny Troy does some typical man stuff. We need more bread. Okay. Yona earns a gold star. Dumb as hell too. You just as dumb. And Michelle Obama pops around to smell a fart. All this and more right here on the Lord Lucan channel. I wouldn't say excitement. I think I'm more nervous actually. Hola, ni hao, and konnichiwa, and a glorious welcome to you. Big loves to those who have subscribed, you beautiful people. And a du royale chess set to the members of the Lucan Manor. First to throw their toys out of their stroller is Man Troy. And this week, as we catch up with them, they're still having a community drive for this supposed charity. Project Heal. Woohoo, yeah, Project Scam. Oh, yeah, Project Heal, yes. Haping the community, apparently. Haping? Mm. Sounds oriental. Did uh, nobody bother to spell check that one then? Or did they run out of L's because Zerubber and Troy have had so many and had to repurpose an I? Anyway, good news apology fans, Zerubber is having what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I was just frustrated because I saw you texting other women. Did she now? Or did she just see him fumbling away at a delightful post he was making about her? Uh, what was the post? Well, I can't be bothered to actually go and find the clip. So here's my dramatic reconstruction. Fire trucks are red. Z is magical. Weed is great. Bicycle. See, romance isn't dead. It's showing signs of life in Syracuse. And if that wasn't amazing enough for your wow senses to comprehend, follows that up with one of those actual apologies that sounds pretty actually genuine. I apologize. That was not right, and I'm hoping that you can forgive me. Uh, where's the catch? Am I admitting to also being at fault somehow? Is that why she suddenly backed off? Right. Well, let's just see how she holds, shall we? Anyway, according to Zerubber, they just need 50 kids to make it a success. We need 50 kids to sign up for Project Hill. Cool, well, uh, yeah, it might be a bit late for some. I like that giving away burgers, sure. Then you get a flyer with it, yeah, okay. Thing is, if you give away free food, then you attract people without food. If you give away fun and entertainment, and maybe they'll toy or two, well, that might attract kids. And try it. And probably Rob. He's a bit simple like that, isn't he? I'm this cord and they're both pulling. Kids don't give a crap about your printed t-shirt, your misspelled branding and your expensive glossy promotional gumph. Kids just want fun and to be distracted from a chaotic home life. So how could someone who understands so little about our community and her neighborhood claim to be so focused on their issues? But no, no, maybe she's really passionate about it. The community is what matters most today. Yeah, all the passion of a night in with Julian, probably. Show them that Project Heal is for the community and then that would allow us to get grant funding she says this even though she clearly puts her anniversary oops i mean sorry their anniversary of troy getting out see she can't even let him have his own getting out day it's got to be their getting out day plus she gets to piggyback on her dad's event and get rid of the kids on a bounce castle for the afternoon bargain but zrrrr's got flyers you know the answer to all the world's issues i hope troy didn't make the flyer can you imagine that It'd be on par with Christine's poster making prowess. I think one of the worst parts is that she's flogging her crap to kids. Quite literally wants 50 of them. We need 50 kids to sign up for Project Hill. Some scam charities pretend to represent and exploit foreign countries. Some use the colour of someone's skin. But by far the worst are those who exploit children for personal gains. Whether it's leeching off your kids for YouTube bucks, good old fashioned child labour, or you know, skimming a bed off here and there to play fines you didn't pay. Well, that, my blueberry muffin, is the lowest. Anyway, let's suspend our reservations for a second while we watch Chef Troy in action. We need more bread. Okay. Good job. And ooh, look, there's her amazing company promoting itself. Lovely. But my daughter not being here. D did you see it? Did you witness the moment? Yes, indeed. Someone picked up a flyer. <laughs> Probably just needed some roach. Then Troy says the quiet bit out loud. I feel bad. I look like <laughs> ass right now. Just now, like you haven't been for the last few months? Come on, you came in with a story about having a small penis, probably. 
Then your missus wears you like a bitch while you walk off in a huff when shit gets warm. Okay, yeah, his asshole might be a bit strong. Twat waffle. How about twat waffle? Comparatively inoffensive and slightly playful. Anyways, we'll be back to find out what else twat waffle gets up to shortly. Now it's time to take a little cup into the bathroom as we rack up a line of legs akimbo. And genius Joey. Quick pause. You know it says identity theft here at the bottom. Wouldn't you be pissed if this guy pretended to be you and they believed him? Nice. Anyway, back to the drug test thing. Joey went and bought a box kit and performed the tinkle bit in front of an independent adjudicator. And what's the verdict? Well, we'll find out later. Next, they chuck in a flashback Rachel and Louie bit, but I don't cover these two because I can't stand them. Unless, of course, Louie is doing something stupid. Off now to see the last in your Vegas. It's the Mills sisters, Juju and Millsy. And Juju sounds happy about her pain. I'm in pain. Good job. So, Juju went to see a specialist high-risk baby assessment thingy. Mad, they said. So how'd your appointment at high-risk go? It was good. They said that he's healthy and everything was okay. really good. Ooh, lovely. So the specialist in those things said he was okay. Oh, well, that's cool then, isn't it? But they did give me a call um, and let me know that you're measuring a little bit tiny or a little bit behind. Who did? The producers? Uh, hi, Doctor, whatever. We need some more drama in the mill story this season. Since we've lost the whole record company angle with that mocha guy, Juju's uterus is the only thing keeping the audience around. So we need some vagina-based drama. Some vagarama. No, oh, no, those specialists said it was fine, but we need some jeopardy. So Doctor throws words around like, and that the baby could even die or be a stillbirth inside. And everyone shits themselves. Don't worry, Justine, I promise. But don't worry, baby's fine. Look, here it is. It's all cute and small. Ooh, check out Sultana's slippers. Nice. And I'm not a fan of old Dr. Doom over here. She's either very self-assured or irresponsible. Why? I promise. No doctor should ever say I promise. The only people who say that either have no idea about setting expectations or are just saying it for a dramatic effect. And frankly, no professional in any customer-facing organization should promise anything. Because as Jeff Goldblum once said, Life, uh, finds a way. To fuck you right up. Life is in fact a bitch. And not like a Troy kind of bitch. The kind of bitch that pulls your knickers down, slaps you in the face, then does you for having your junk out in public. Anyway, enough of that. Billsy is ready to call in the backup. We need your mother here. Yeah, you know, the person you hid it from because there was such a monster. Not such a dragon now when you need her, is she? Uh -huh. Right, we'll be back with these a little bit later on. And it's time now for a little commercial break. But stick around for more. We've got tension as Joey pees in a cup and not on the floor. And will the Mills is, 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 is lose baby number nine? Nope, see, there it is. It's fine. It's all good. Don't worry. Kindly watch as much of the adverts as you can as it helps my channel. So skip the skip to support the channel and I'll see you in a mo. Welcome back, my delightful cupcake. And now it's time to see fabulous Tenny and Roy. And just in case you missed it, I didn't mean fabulous as in this. I mean fabulous as in this. A fabricator of stories. Now, Tenny has been very vanilla in my mind. Regular without uniqueness. Then she went toe to toe with Rob's mum, which I think added to the thought that Tenny isn't quite the sweet little dumpling that we might have been led to believe. That your story is only good if there's not a bunch of footage to prove otherwise. Also, while we're here, why does Rob think it's totally fine to be high as hell around the kids? I always do, man. But totally sober when he's got an interview to do. Giving up on my mom is not an option. Just an observation. And what the hell is Rob gonna teach the KSI forehead looking kid? He's probably writing a thesis on the negative effects of incarcerated parenthood as we speak. Meanwhile, Tenya's just got a job at this delightful law office. Hmm, that looks, uh, affordable. And that company is probably totally legit. Oh, uh, uh, I thought there was going to be a hang on a second. This totally super 100% real company, which rhymes with a name. Hi, I'm Tenny from Henry. Is totally real, probably. Even though the company Henry, Henry and McDonnell did or does exist sort of kind of. It's definitely not this building they filmed because the company address takes us to this base. Sweet 100 to be precise. So it can't be Tom Henry. What about his brother, Jerry? And yes, Apparently, these two are called Tom and Jerry, as in cat and mouse, as in 
Is this all just some sort of big red herring? Did somebody create a website and backstory just to write letters to people? Pretending to be paralegals, perhaps? Anyway, so she works for a company with no website, fake looking LinkedIn pages, dodgy pseudonyms of cartoon characters, and they don't work from where they say they are. Yeah, nothing suspicious happening here at all. I mean, we all know Tenny is a wannabe am drama, so let's check out a performance of at the office. Henry Law Office, this is Tenny. How may I help you? I love that. Tenny from Henry. Sounds fun. I also love the blank paper. Faceless file. They've even splashed out on a mug here. Yep. Must be legit if she's got her own cup, you know. Oh, and uh, if it's legit, why was she talking about the law stuff that the company doesn't cover? And what county are the charges in? Tom Henry, for example, does operations management, tax law and taxation. And Jerry does probate and employment. So why would she be taking a call about a criminal prosecution? Well, the plot. That's why. So don't question it and keep on marching. I feel like it's kind of that thing that you, you needed that you never really knew you needed. A job is something you need but you never thought you needed? Are you stupid? A job isn't like one of those mops with the squirty bottle attachment that I didn't know I needed the other day. That's what people who are pretending the job have a say. No one says, ooh, I never knew getting money exchanged for my time and labor was something I needed in my life. It's like JLo pretending she was from the block. Nope, I don't buy it. She's a snotty little entitled gaslighting drama queen and it doesn't stop there. Yeah, that's not gonna work for me. More of that shortly, but right now we're off to see something slim with a load of mess at the top. That's right, it's Coraline and one and done Daniel. This week, Coraline is having some girly time with the voice of reason Haley. I quite like Haley, but I bet she does all the heavy lifting in that friendship. I mean, I'm not on any birth control, and we're not being seen. The conversation turns to the bedroom and Coraline tells her that she's not taking precautions. I mean, if it happens, it happens. It's people who have the shoulder shrugging if it happens attitude, who also have the shoulder shrugging attitude to the baby when it arrives. She can't handle not being made a cup of coffee. So how the hell will she ever be able to handle the multitude of spinning plates that is parenthood? And what's her motivation for being a mummy? Teaching a new life about the world? Sharing life and experiences with the future of your legacy? If I got pregnant, I feel like you would just give me a ring. Uh, nope. Yeah, maybe you get a ring and stick it on her finger. Yep, really, that is it. Can you imagine if the kids watch this back? Hey kid, you existed because mummy wanted to play husband and wife and get a load of attention and some shiny jewelry. I guess I haven't like thought too deep onto it. Cue the voice of reason. That's a very rough road to figure out. I think the list of stuff you've thought about looks a little bit uh, like this. Dan, I'm totally with Haley. So off they go to meet one and Dan. Yeah, it's all very nice to begin with. We're all shaking hands and being polite. Daddy even knows to stand when someone enters the room. Not so bad so far. Outperforming Joey, but uh, you know, that's a, a bit of a low bar that really, isn't it? Well, thanks for letting me come. Yeah, that's something Coraline never said to him. Whee! We'll be back to see if Haley convinces one and Dan to leave her later on. It has to be Daniel, because now we're all in. Off we go now to go with Kimbo and Joey. Man, how's that being right about Joey's drug habit going? Are you still convinced? What? That's past all of them. Uh, what's that? Uh, he passed all of them. Uh, hey, Facebook, still confident I'm a moron? Now, I don't really want to brag and tell you what I told you so, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I won't mention it again. I'm a gracious winner. Anyway, Kim is still... Sorry, sorry, yes, I promise I won't do it again. So, uh, Kimbo is giving the amazing Joey the old how do you do that line. I want to know how you did that. When Christine floundered her way onto our screens, no one really questioned her affectations. We laughed. Ho oh, ho, look at the crackhead. The fact she's a deadbeat mother to multiple children didn't seem to matter. She was just a joke. But Joey wasn't afforded that kind of leniency. Joey has the matter of someone or something. His speech, his face, and all that sort of thing. But these are all symptoms of a long-term drug use. And it kind of fitted him as standard. Don't like those nasty rims? He doesn't have multiple children with multiple people. <coughs> Kim? He doesn't get blasted around someone else's kids. Rob? He doesn't punch stuff and leave. Millsy? Because the key to Joey is very simple. Joey is very simple. If I was dirty, I wouldn't have pissed in that cup. I can promise you that. Man, stupid. And does nothing to help himself when it comes to looking guilty. And some people ask why would a man hang out at a store and maybe wash his car? Well, I sit at the store sometimes and wash my car. Well, because he's been in a box for years. If you stand in a box and stare at a wall for a long period of time, then go stand somewhere really normal. See how that feels. Fucking free is how it feels. And yes, he should prioritize his wife, his communication, and his kids above hanging out. But men have been avoiding going home for centuries. 
That's why the English invented the pub. While I was inside, I was being moved from one wing to another. And along the way was a piece of sheltered pavement that went outside for a short time. It was dark and raining. And you know what I did? I stood in that couple of square feet of space and looked straight up at the sky. I didn't care I was getting wet or the ground was muddy, that the sky was dark and that there weren't any stars to see. I had a slice of freedom. And I was going to savor that for as long as I could. Those shops are probably Joey's little slice of sky. It's totally understandable to ask, where the hell have you been? And perhaps if he could be so eloquent, his answer could well be, just looking at the sky. But he did take all the money out of the family account, spend stupid money on stupid stuff, so I'm not letting him off the hook. Let's get the record straight. I'm no Joey fan. Boring individual with the hips of Barney the Dinosaur, if you ask me. But I just don't like to see an innocent man get dragged over the coals. Right. Well, let's go see what that pesky Millsy is, 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 is up to now. I'm just, I'm going, I'm going through some stuff right now. I just need you to come out with an emergency. Can't control how people are. Don't want to be hurt anymore. Going through some stuff right now. I just don't want to be hurt anymore. Can't control how people are. I said emergency. I'm going through some stuff right now. I just. Can't control how people are. Don't want to be hurt anymore. I'm going through some stuff right now. I just don't want to be hurt anymore. Can't control how people are. You can't control how people are. Let them be how they are. Over to Coraline and one and done Daniel. Then there's a very good reason why we all like Haley. Really want to do it to let her know and just cut the cord sooner than later. Yeah. Hey, good girl. Quick, there she is. Do it now. Do it now. Uh, hello. Ah, you dumped. Hey, take that. Hey. But unfortunately, it's not quite as easy as that. Is it likely that you'll end a relationship first for Bianca Wood? Ah, allow me to answer that one. Coraline ended it when Daniel cheated on her with a girl he was trying to persuade to have a threesome with. With Caroline. Mmm. But of course it wasn't him and Caroline, it was just him baiting the girls. Coraline found out and ended the relationship on Instagram. Nice. So does that mean it's the end of the couple on this show? I don't know. One more time to Syracuse, where Troy and Zara are meeting baby mama Yona, and Yona is understandably pissed off as her daughter is getting caught up in all the crossfire. Man was stood up by her own father, because Zara is calling the shots. Until me and you can build co-parents and stability, it can't be anybody else involved, Troy. And I think there's a clear difference between this and someone just being bitter and stubborn about contact with their daughter. She wants reliability and calm. She's looking out for a kid and someone like Zara who professes to love her kids so much and the community apparently should understand that. But as Yona points out, I don't want to talk to Zaria. She's a stranger. She divorced and left one inmate to be with another. And look how she's a puppy with Yona. This is when you step in and control your husband. Because that, that that's, none of, his, man. Right but that's none of his concern. Because she knows Yona will probably beat her ass across the car park and back. If she decided to get all smart about it, it's easy to get all row and mad with Troy because she knows he won't fight back. Okay, one last trip. And it's to see the fake deceptive manipulative divisive gaslighting face grabbing Tenny. Dad Rob. So Michelle Obama and Snoop Dogg were popped over to clear the air. And Rob, who couldn't sound more like Forrest Grump if he tried, asked what happened. How did it happen, Mama? What you mean had happened? How did it happen, Mama? Because as far as his little collection of brain cells are concerned, that both of them are working overtime, you put your hands on let... her, Mama. It's all his mum fault because he's let Tenny be the unreliable narrator. Just like we TV. Unreliable narrators because they need a good hook. Tenny, on the other hand, is an unreliable later because she's playing Rob off against his mother. She put her hands on, she touched me. Why? What back at why? Because you hit her. Did you not, Mama? Have you? And while we're at it, let's get a quick replay on who touched who first. Now, you may be forgiven for thinking you just watched Teddy touch her first. No, no, my confused cupcake. That's not what happened. If you see it from Teddy's perspective, you can clearly see that Rob's mum putting her face in Teddy's hand. Yeah, see that? Total proof. She touched no, me. Not at all. Teddy didn't grab her mouth. Teddy know better. Absolutely, I'm with crazy mama all the way. Teddy has divided and conquered the family so she can have that half retarded man all to herself. Yeah, great. And there she is shaking her head like she doesn't know what she's done. She has disrespected me. Disrespected you how? I don't care why she keeps saying that. Absolutely disgraceful behavior. Crazy mama may be crazy, but crazy got perspective. If that's what you want, we'll accept it and move on. Rob, 
Will that be the end of the war? Will Coraline finally get dumped? Will Akimbo stay faithful while Joey's on his 90 day program? Will Juju have that baby? Oh, yep, yeah, 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 yes, she does. There it is. All that and more on the next thrilling episode. Well, really and before we close here, I've got a special bit of magic for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you like what I do, then you can join me weekdays for Coffee at the Manor, the bestest way to start us to your day. And please do like and share the video or check out one of these little beauties. So until we meet again, stay beautiful, love to my three, and you take care of yourself. <laughs>